Maybe all the pickup artists are like, ah, oh, Simon, actually, women love hostility. It just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. I want to fight you. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building a beautiful website and growing your online presence. More about them in a little bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. Hi, as always, I am your host, Simon. I'm going to say one of my writers, in this case, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Writes me a script. I read it. Sam adds some memes afterwards, and let's jump in. What are we talking about today? The most reprehensible TV shows ever. Okay, here we go. Reality TV shows. Well, that, that, that definitely narrows the field, but also somehow makes it more easy, doesn't it? I never really enjoyed reality TV shows. Yeah, me neither, Kevin. So we're the perfect people to make this video. Aside from how fake most of them are, it just always seemed pointless. There was often enough petty drama in my own life. Why would I watch other people live through their petty and often fabricated drama? Uh. Oh yeah, we're the worst, yeah. It's an excellent point. I don't know. I, I do know why reality TV is so popular because sometimes for my sins, they'll be on Netflix and I'll be like, this show looks super bad. Let's watch it. And it is super bad, but somehow you're like, oh my God, but I care. I care whether they choose marriage or mortgage. Why do I care? <laughs> and they always choose marriage and it's like, oh God, you're so financially irresponsible. It's not even funny. The exceptions of this was shows that were designed to screw with the contestants in some way. Some shows like Joe Millionaire, which convinced dozens of gold digging bachelorettes that they were vying for the love of a millionaire, but he was really just a construction worker that cleaned up well. <laughs> <laughs> That's savage. Why are your hands so calloused when you work in financial derivatives? I don't even know what a financial derivative is. Where did I pull that from? Or my absolute favorite, The Joe Schmo Show, which was literally just The Truman Show, but done for real. No f way. Their selection for the season one contestant was brilliant, as he turned out to be too smart to fall for most of their pranks, but too dumb to even consider for a moment that everyone on the show except for him was an actor. Who would have thought putting on Molly's underwear would be fun? I mean, but it is very freeing. What? These may seem a little mean-spirited, but the latter was just some harmless fun, and the former was pretending to teach some moral lesson about true love and materialism or something. It absolutely didn't teach that, and the only thing anyone seemed to learn from the show was that Joe Millionaire had eliminated the girls one by one in order of bra size. Ah. <laughs> oh my god, so you found a show and you just filled it with the sh- with the sh-, sh people. It's like you found gold diggers and vain, uh, not vain, what's the word where you just choose someone by their looks? Whatever that word is. You've just filled it with these people. Great. Well done. Lying to your contestants about something like that is a moral gray area at best, but sometimes reality shows go entirely too far in their quest for ratings and ad revenue. Bridal plasty. No, don't tell me this. This is about people who are getting married and then they're having plastic surgery to make themselves look better. Oh no. I feel like any TV show, reality TV show, that's about people getting plastic surgery where the TV show is like encouraging that. That doesn't seem like super psychologically healthy. Everyone wants their wedding day to be special. People spend incredible amounts of time and money planning their special day down to the very last detail. The idea of a reality show in which contestants compete for their dream wedding and a fabulous makeover is hardly outrageous. But what if the bride-to-be's dream makeover is required to include a laundry list of plastic surgery? Surgery procedures. Fucking hell. Bridal Plasty featured 12 women who competed in weekly challenges. The winner of each challenge would get one surgery from her wish list. Oh my god, how many surgeries are you having? Followed by the standard reality show vote to kick out one of the contestants. At the end of the show, the final bride standing would win her dream wedding, complete with everything that was left on her surgery wish list. I feel like if you've got a surgery wish list, look, we've all got things we don't like about ourselves. Um, but when you've got a fuck list of things that you then want to go on a reality TV show to get sorted out. Your first call should not be to the reality TV show. It should be to a therapist or just your friends. And if your friends are like, is this a good idea? Get better friends. Every bride wants to look perfect on her wedding day. But some may need some extra help. I feel like this is a bit callous of me to say, but it's, I just, I think so much of that like image stuff and i'm not uh, like i don't have a problem with people fixing things that are not quite right about themselves i think like plastic surgery don't really have a problem with that as a general concept but overdone plastic surgery i think speaks to bigger problems like it speaks to like 
Mm, was Michael Michael Jackson more had that he had a skin condition, so you can't really say that as an example. Although he had the nose thing, didn't he? But look, people have obviously taken plastic surgery too far, and I think there's just there should be a, a line where you cross it, and if you've got a wish list, that's the line. This is beyond the line. There's a little excess tissue here. A little? <laughs> it's not uncommon for women to get one or two small procedures done leading up to their wedding. Really? I, I, I have never heard of this. I don't know anyone who's done this, or at least anyone who's told me they've done this. It's usually either just Botox or a tummy tuck to ensure that they're still fit into their dress. I am tired of Earth. These people. I'm tired of being caught in the tangle of their lives. Really? I mean, uh, Botox, sure. That's one of those things where I'll be like, okay, fine, it's a little injection in your face that takes your wrinkles away, fine. Tummy tuck? Isn't that like a proper surgical procedure? Like, Botox isn't a surgery. Is this American? This feels very American. However, these women were competing for transformative plastic surgeries. It was a disgusting premise for a show that promoted dangerous and unhealthy beauty standards and encouraged body dysmorphia. That's what I'm looking for. The psychological thing. Body dysmorphia. They didn't just encourage it. It is celebrated as the show was essentially just an hour-long showcase of 12 women's insecurities about their own bodies. Unsurprisingly, the 2010 show on E! only ran for a single season thanks to abysmally low ratings. Very surprisingly, it drew a lot of criticism from the least likely of sources, the American Society of Plastic surgeons no i don't I, I think that that doesn't actually surprise me at all kevin because i think the american society of plastic surgeons if you ask them they'll probably be like no if someone comes in and they have a laundry list of plastic surgery procedures i'll first of all be like am i giving them too much credit here because if i was a plastic surgeon and someone came in with a list of things that they wanted to fix i'd be like first of all i just want you to have a chat with a therapist i just want or a psychiatrist i just want you to sit down have an hour-long chat and then we will revisit it and if they say no i'm not going to do that then i'd encourage them to go elsewhere because i don't think it's morally okay to to do something like that i think if someone wants to come in and have their nose fixed or their wrinkles taken away fine i'm a plastic surgeon that's what i do but when someone comes in and it's like and this and this and this and this and this and this transformative surgery i'll be like you've probably got something wrong up here not here I'm ugly and I'm proud. Loader. I'm ugly and I'm proud. Loader. I'm ugly and I'm proud. All right, let me interrupt this video today. Tell you about the glorious sponsor that is longtime sponsor and friend of this channel. And it's brilliant to have them here in 2023, even though I'm recording this in 2022. It's weird when it crosses over the year. I know it's only next month and I normally film these like a little bit ahead. But uh, that is that is weird. It's 2023 when you're watching this. How's the future? Are you building your Squarespace website in the future? Because you should be! Uh, Squarespace is the best all-in-one platform to build your own website and grow your online business. They provide you with powerful analytics and insights into who visits your site and how they interact with your content. Squarespace's analytics tools include page views, traffic sources, audience, geography, and more. Which is useful because like, you build your website and you see if, if they were just like, yeah, I don't, you, don't, you don't even know if anyone's coming. That's no use. And to go more in-depth on it is, uh, is useful. Like if you're, I don't know, John, and you've got a, a window washing business based in... Rotherham. <laughs> it's not going to be much good if it's like, well, 90% of your people are visiting from uh, South Dakota. <laughs> I don't even know where that is. I mean, I know it's in America, but I couldn't point to it. In the South, maybe? Look, that's the sort of valuable information that you can get from Squarespace Analytics. Also, stand out in any inbox with Squarespace's email campaigns. Convert email subscribers into loyal customers with their easy-to-use templates and automation features provided by Squarespace. Now, I'll just add on to this one. I used, pre previously used, and it's been a very long time since I sent an email newsletter. So it was even more of a waste. I was paying another nameless company that is like one of the big players in the email newsletter space. I was paying them hundreds of dollars a month, like to have a newsletter, that I, a list of people that I didn't even email. It was such a waste of money. It took me so long to cancel it. And then Squarespace were like, we do that. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll just use that. And it's cheaper. It's so much cheaper. And the website is also included. Why would you not? Oh my god, Simon, get back to the points. Also, there's a members area feature, which makes it simple and easy for you to monetize your content in a way that fits with your brands, unlock a new revenue stream for your business, and sell access to gated content for your most dedicated customers. I should do that. Put that North Korea video in a members area. <laughs> That'll only get assassinated by my members. <laughs> Look, head to... That's a deep pull from the lore of this channel. I'm sorry if you don't get that. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash blaze to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you, Squarespace, you legends. 2023, let's go!
And now back to today's video. It would be easy to assume that plastic surgeons would be in all, for, all in favor of anything that made women feel terrible about their own bodies, but the society found it not only to be morally outrageous, but medically unethical. Yeah, of course they did, because they're still fucking doctors. <laughs> the society has rules against plastic surgery being a contest prize, but the show managed to very narrowly avoid violating these rules. The surgeon met with the contestants briefly before the show and approved all of the procedures on their wish lists, meaning the meeting the bare minimum requirements for it not to officially be a violation of the code of ethics oh boy <laughs> it could have set a dangerous precedent for reality tv but the show tanked so horribly that it's unlikely that anyone would try this gimmick again bridal plasties one season ran for only three months to low rating so the show would probably have been forgotten forever were it not for the murder of one of the contestants oh my lord a few years after the show aired a bride featured was having an affair with one of her nursing students he wound up beating her to death with a hammer and burying her in the backyard F Hell. That part's not the reality show's fault, but encouraging her to feel insecure wasn't exactly going to help her marriage either. Steady on. Um, that, I feel, is. That's a, those are separate issues. The pickup artist. Do you wish you could have more luck with the ladies? You're not alone, and the seduction industry is worth an estimated $100 million per year because there are plenty of men out there that are more than happy to take your money in exchange for mostly useless advice. You sometimes see these on YouTube, these like, or people making fun of them on YouTube more often. Um, and it's just, it always does feel like, look, I got no problem. Like, do you want to be better with the ladies? I think. Most people would reasonably answer, I don't know, unless you're like super charming or whatever, be like, yeah, that'd be nice. I'd like to talk, you know, know how to talk to women better. I'd like to know how to like be more charming. I think that's totally fine. But you just don't, it, it, it always gets to like, you get these like extreme like seediness. There's this seediness about it where it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to go that far, do you? Wanting to cash in on that industry, VH1 hired Eric Von Markovic, better known by his stage name of Mystery. I've heard of Mystery. He's the guy who wears that stupid big hat. There's definitely videos making fun of him on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> to teach men the mystery method for getting women into bed, Mystery grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons and learning stage magic, so pretty much the exact alpha male <laughs> you'd seek out for help in your love life. Take a look at Matador and I, showing the boys how it's done. Rather than practicing sleight of hand, Mystery worked as a mentalist. Since his entire career was based on lying to audiences and trying to convince them he understood things that he didn't, he was the perfect host for the pickup artist. When filming began for the show, Mystery was 36 years old, but I swear he didn't look a day over 50. <laughs> he also had this old bargain basement Tommy Lee impersonator vibe going on, which is great for a magician, but less so for pretty much anybody else. I could go on a huge rant about how the entire pickup artist community is a giant scam based on sexism, misogyny, Misogyny and bullshit pseudoscience. Exactly. I feel like that's the problem. It's like, do you want to be more charismatic and charming? Yes. Do you want to be sleazy? No. <laughs> It's not hard. I could also point out how many notable personalities that teach the art of seduction have a tendency to face criminal charges for harassment and sexual assaults to the surprise of absolutely fucking nobody. But even without any of that, the show is downright painful to watch. Seeing some dude in black eyeliner trying to teach a desperate 45-year-old virgin how to pick up women is among the cringiest things that I've ever watched, and he offered zero useful advice. A man named Mystery took eight lovable losers and turned them into Casanovas. I get it, I know what's going on. <laughs> The advice would only theoretically be useful to someone who was also dressed like a stage magician, and even then it's doubtful. The pickup artist was designed to teach people to commoditize sex while also instilling a sense of entitlement in its viewers. Mystery wanted you to know that if you do this mystical bullshit he preached, that women should be grateful that you gave them your time, not annoyed that you were harassing them on the street or while talking to a friend at a bar. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, no, no, stop it. It's cringe. Even ignoring the hostility towards women. And you shouldn't be hostile. I don't feel, maybe all the pickup artists are like, ah, oh, Simon, actually, women love hostility. It just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. I want to fight you. All right. I don't know. I've, I, I don't know. I've never been hostile towards women, but I can't imagine that that's particularly successful. I mean, especially if you want, uh, I don't know. Doesn't like, 
I, I guess maybe not, and it's just like me. I don't know, don't most people want to be in a relationship where there's like to and fro and conversation and like a relationship rather than just picking women up? But no, I do know guys who are just a bit like, I don't know, but and I also find them a bit cringe, where it's like, no, I'm not really looking for a relationship, I just like, you know, meeting women and uh, this kind of stuff, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. It just feels a bit cringe, doesn't it? <laughs> don't get me wrong, casual sex can be a lot of fun, but you can only f- so many different people before it starts to feel boring and hollow. Exactly. I understand that the contestants on this show weren't at that point yet, but it would be nice if mystery even hinted at the possibility of an actual human connection with women. Okay, Kevin's just putting what I was trying to say into words like a writer would. This is what I was trying to express, rather than just piling everyone into the limo, yelling, let's go f- some strippers. Don't tell me that actually happened. That is so cringe. <laughs> so cringe. Ah! It was a terrible show that instilled dangerous lessons in impressionable men. Not only did it refuse to acknowledge that women are also people, it also refused to acknowledge that mystery knew jack shit about them. Um, yeah, this is another one of those things, but this hasn't gone away. Like, until he got cancelled into oblivion, there was that Andrew Tate guy, who was also like, the shit he said about women is just like, fucking hell. It's not the 1960s as much as you wish it was, Andrew. Jesus Christ, grow up. Right to jail, right away. The dude was just some nerd that posted a bunch of pseudoscientific spreadsheets to Usenet in the 90s for a bunch of incels to read. <laughs> he became famous for his analytic approach to female conquest, even if the research was all flawed and yielded no results. That fame led to money, and that money led to bitches. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> If you're rich, famous, and especially if you're being followed around by a TV crew, suddenly picking up strangers at a bar becomes a lot easier no matter how stupid everything you say and do is. Are you hot? Have you ever watched a traditional beauty pageant and thought to yourself, wow, I really wish these people didn't spend so much time talking and showing off their talents? No, because I've never watched a traditional beauty pageant, and I never will because I couldn't imagine anything I cared about less. Probably not, which is why Are You Hot? The Search for America's Sexiest People was cancelled after only a single six-episode season. The competition was judged by fashion designer Randolph Duke, model Rachel Hunter, and actor Lorenzo Lamas. I've never heard of any of these people. <laughs> Wait, have I heard of Rachel Hunter? I feel like I've heard of Rachel Hunter. Is Rachel Hunter British? Why do I know Rachel Hunter? It doesn't matter. I barely know her. And Lorenzo Lamas. Actor. <laughs> Even Kevin put it, actor. A bunch of objectively attractive men and women walked onto a stage where they would be told they were a 4 out of 10. Lorenzo Lamas was prone to using laser pointer to highlight any flaws, real or imaginary, on a person's body to make them feel like absolute sh**. What the f***, man? What if, what, if, so what if their eyes are what makes them feel like And the show is just him shining a laser pointer in people's eyes? <laughs> f***ing hell. Now, you may not always think that our competitors are quite that hot, but the important thing is, they think they are. What? There's really not much to say about this show, other than it was a disgusting pile of shit that crushed people's sense of self-worth and left them in tears. It's been almost 20 years since it originally aired, and I'm sure everyone involved would prefer if the entire world just forgot that it existed. I can only hope that when the show's ratings came in, it left the producers in tears the same way that it left all the contestants in tears. I'll tell Sam to roll the Woody Har- Har- Harrelson crying into his money meme, but that may not be appropriate, as ABC was sued by Howard Stern for stealing the extremely derivative idea idea from his show. I haven't cried like that since Titanic. What have I done? Um, I'd normally say that'd be a hard case to win, but one of the producers of the show, Are You Hot, was a former producer on the TV version of Stern's show, so ABC decided to settle out of court, likely forfeiting what revenue the show actually brought in. Excellent. And that's going in Howard Stern's pocket, which is... I don't know anything about Howard Stern other than that people really like him, so I'm going to say that's good. Howard Stern is one of those people that is so insanely famous in America, but if he was standing there right now, I couldn't tell you if it was him or not, and I don't know what his voice sounds like, which I know Americans will find insane, but I kind of feel like that's... Maybe we have people like Jules Holland, who you have no idea who he is, but in the UK he's mega famous, and uh, I guess Howard Stern is like that sort of vibe for America. Weird, right? Born in the wild. This bizarre Lifetime show took all the manufactured drama out of those nature survival shows and combined it with the miracle of life. It's unclear who their intended target audience was, but my best guess is that it's people who wanted to watch someone die during childbirth. 
fucking hell. Born in the wild followed the lives of six American women who decided that foregoing modern medicine to have a natural birth wasn't enough for them. They were going to give birth in the great outdoors. Are you insane? <laughs> this is fucking insane. The other sh- was insane. I've never heard of this level of insanity. The show was likely inspired by a viral YouTube video of a woman giving birth in a river, and it was medically irresponsible at best. This is like, uh, there's lots of medically irresponsible stuff on YouTube and on websites that you should just ignore. Don't then make a reality show about it, because you're just spreading a dangerous message. At least it would be if any of it was genuine. The show wanted the best of both worlds, drawing in nature lovers who were fans of giving birth in the wild, as well as morbid gawkers who wanted to see mothers and children in peril and possibly die. Instead, it disappointed both crowds, though disappointing the people who wanted to see someone die in labor is probably a good thing. Though the mothers did have natural births, it was a far cry from walking into a river alone to give birth. They went to wilderness locations and essentially set up little shanty towns, ensuring that every couple was attended to by a midwife, except for one expectant mother who was a midwife herself. That doesn't make sense. If I was a surgeon, I'm not going to do my own f***ing surgery. <laughs> Jesus. And they had a team of medics on hand in case anything even went the tiniest bit wrong. Even though Lifetime made it clear there were medical staff on hand in PR materials, the show was less forthcoming about this. This drew heavy criticism from medical professionals for promoting a potentially dangerous form of childbirth. Fortunately, the show is unlikely to have much of a societal impact or caused any real damage since it did so poorly that it doesn't even have its own Wikipedia page. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, I don't have my own Wikipedia page. Oh. Boy meets boy. The year, 2003. And Bravo was ready to knock down some societal barriers by airing television's first same-sex dating show. Was the world ready to watch 15 gay men compete for the love of one eligible bachelor? Unfortunately, we'll never know. Cruel twists were all the rage in the early 2000s on reality TV. Oh no, they're gonna be straight. Oh no, this is not okay. <laughs> And Boy Meets Boy had the cruelest twist of them all. Half of the contestants were straight. Ah, oh, that is so cringe. One exceptional gay man. Fifteen extraordinary suitors all vying for his affection. He must select just one man. The premise of the show, as The Bachelor understood it, was that each week he would eliminate three suitors. On the final week, he would choose from among the final three and would receive a vacation for him and his new boyfriend. Pretty standard dating show stuff. However, once only three men remained, The Bachelor was informed privately that one of the remaining suitors was straight. If he chose one of the gay suitors, they would win the vacation and $25,000. But if he chose the straight man, that person would win $25,000 and he would get nothing. This is fucking savage and inappropriate, but also kind of a clever concept. To his credit, The Bachelor handled this news like a f***ing champ. Despite pretty clearly being seething with anger, he was able to maintain his composure and continue on with the show. I am not gay. The show had now changed, though. It was no longer about finding the person with whom he had the strongest connection in the hopes of finding love. It was about choosing the one he was most confident was actually gay. I realize that reality dating competitions are stupid anyway, and it is extremely rare for the relationships to last more than a couple of months, but this twist was brutally mean-spirited, and it undermines the entire point of a dating show. There's an argument to be made that they were trying to show that they were not different, and blah, 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 but there are much more tasteful ways to try and convey that message. What really separates Boy Meets Boy from the other shows on this list is that the other shows were all ratings disasters. This show was a massive hit. It was such a big hit that they couldn't even do a second season of it. After Joe Millionaire's successful first season, Fox had to import bachelorettes from Europe who were unaware of the twist. I didn't know that. But Boy Meets Boy was so well known around the entire world that Bravo couldn't even sell the concept to other countries. I mean, that's a victim of your own success if there ever was one. It's also weird that I've never heard of the show, despite it being this huge international success. I've heard of this next show, though. There's something about Miriam. In the same vein, vein as Boy Meets Boy was the British show The Something About Miriam. It was the same general principle, playing people's personal identities for laughs. It was even filmed the same year, though this show wouldn't release until 2004 due to litigation from the contestants. And you know that that's going to make it a good story. Six men were given the opportunity to compete for the love of 21-year-old Mexican model Miriam Rivera. What none of them were informed of until after she made 
made her final selection was that Miriam was a transgendered woman. The man she chose accepted the prize money and vacation with Miriam on camera, but as soon as the camera stopped rolling, he rejected the prize, and the six contestants sued in an attempt to keep the show from ever airing. The lawsuit accused the creators of the show of conspiracy to commit sexual assault, defamation, breach of contract, and personal injury in the form of psychological and emotional damage. There was a major backlash, and the headline in the Daily Mirror read, Hero tricked into TV snog with bloke. Wow, Daily Mirror. <laughs> Wow. Which I think tells me everything I need to know about the Daily Mirror. It does indeed. It does, Kevin. You're nailing the Daily Mirror right there. There's something about Miriam was almost universally panned as being gross and distasteful. It is distasteful. I mean, it is, right? Despite the poor critical reception, the final episode garnered exceptional ratings. That's probably because everyone wanted to see how a bunch of dude bros would react to finding out they were making out with a beautiful woman with a dick that would put theirs to shame. I'm not a woman. I was born as a man. I told you all along. I told you. I told you guys. Based on their lawsuit, I'd say the answer to how they would react is not very well. And that's the end of today's episode. Thank you for watching. Do it! Slap me, bitch! You, you, I'm a fucking whore!